Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of Lunchtime Learnings. I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Butler from the estate agency, the founder of the estate agency. So Chris, thanks very much for joining me today. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I look incredibly white. I've got no natural light in this room, uh, bar a weird little skylight up there. So I look a bit ghostly, but maybe that's in theme for Halloween being October, right? There you go. And I'm looking very tanned because it's all this, all the walking the dogs and walking football. Well, that's what it does to me. <laughs> you look like you've had a week in Spain. No, it's a week in England. You wouldn't believe it at times with the weather we have here, but no, it's lovely. So how's it all going? Yeah, good. Thank you. We are uh, four months old as of yesterday. And it's really interesting. So we've had lots to that I thought worked in, in the previous business that I was in that we've had to untangle and unpick to make sure that we can scale and we can scale, but not at the expense of losing a third of our agency each month. So it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act and we just want to help agents run profitable businesses. That's it, it's as simple as that. And in order to do that, there's, I've had to really look at the value we offer and spend say that first four months you know we've grown we've taken taken some associates on which is great but really looking at our our marketing our support and our tech and making sure that we excel in those three areas so it's been it's been a roller coaster i could do with the holiday uh, but good thank you for asking good so let's go back to the beginning so how did you get into agency in the first place why would you ever want to become an estate agent and what are the lessons have you learned along the way I bit of a sad story. Unfortunately, I lost my nan when I was younger, and the being I lost my father when when I was four. So I was kind of the man of the house. I had to go and sell her property. And my background before a state agency was I was running. Um, I'd done a few property flips in between working in the city uh, for a company called Deloitte. So I was a management consultant. So my job there was looking at processes, systems and making sure they were fit for purpose, then trying to flog a property up in Birmingham with uh, an independent high street agent that, um, yeah, it was just terrible. And I, I thought to myself, right, if anyone's going through uh, the emotional turmoil I, I am of, of having lost a relative I was extremely close with and having to, to sell a house, that I wouldn't let anyone under my watch go through the, the same shite that I went through. Uh, and so that... Um, was my why for getting into into a state agency i just thought it could be done better and it, it, i still am of that mindset that in the uk it can still be done so much better and i'm sure we'll get into the why and the how of that on on today's uh, lunchtime learning okay well I'm definitely interested to what you mean it can be done better because i couldn't agree more uh, but tell Tell me, you know, what you think can be done in better, can be done better and improved. We have to, the model has to change because it doesn't reward the end user and it doesn't reward the agent in the majority of the UK setup. So I think our fees are far too low, meaning we don't compete on value, we compete on fee and then value is affected. Meaning that Joe Public see us all as, you know, uh, the, the same. And because of that and because of uh, KPIs and the current structures, agents are worried about losing uh, instructions and they drop their fee as a result. And actually, I think as a, as a business or as, a, as an industry, we need to upskill ourselves, educate ourselves so that we are competing on value and change some of the models that mean that you have to, as a high street neg, sell 30 a month just to keep the wolf on the door, right? I'd rather, in my view, I think if someone can sell five or 10 a month and offer a world-class fiduciary service and then get paid handsomely off the back, I think that's that's the way it should go and hopefully will be going. Okay, it's interesting because obviously I haven't seen it from your side. I saw it when I was an agent for 20 odd years and you, know, you can, as an estate agent, earn pretty well if you're good at what you do. Um, and for me, it was never about the fees. It's always about the customer. The customer is the most important person in that whole journey. 
So what can agents be doing to add that value to demonstrate why they are worth more than any other agent? So educate the customer, right? If you're having to go out and do 0.75% fee, you cannot have the customer's best interest at heart because you will have to do so many, you'll have to be a transactional agent to earn decent money. Whereas if you to double that and charge one and a half, well, okay, that might be an extra, say, uh, what are we looking? Seven grand on a 500,000 pound instruction, seven and a half thousand. But if you're going to outperform, out negotiate, out service the other agent, then it doesn't, the, the, the fee is irrelevant. Um, so for me, I think, I think licensing has to come in. It's been obviously extremely slow, but I think um, the, the industry needs to change in the way that agents are remunerated. And that's why I think the self-employed models are going to, are going to really take off in the next few years. And in fact, I think next year, if you look at, the last three years worth of growth in the self-employed space i think 2024 will match that in one year okay interesting well i love what you said about outperform out service and out negotiate that's a script uh, right, that we use you know uh, Stephen, based on our conversation today mr vendor do you think i'm going to outperform out negotiate or both the other agent all three brilliant so what's your what's your fee chris well fee aside Stephen, am i your agent of choice yes you are chris why is that because i believe you're going to war for me um i've seen some of your marketing and i know you're going to negotiate really hard and i trust you okay brilliant now what's your fee well it doesn't matter what your fee is at that point because i've just told you why they're picking you um but being able to help someone self-discover with scripts and people often uh, misplace scripts for being leading or a bit wolf of wall street s but scripts allow you to actively listen but more importantly actively help the vendor or landlord um make the correct decision couldn't agree more i'd also go to um out learn and out knowledge all our competitors as well um you know that's what we're here to do so i like your file five outs um i think it's excellent really good or well, well, you're free but now you've got five to add no i'll add them on <laughs> which it which is great um you talked about actively listening um and that's a great skill to have you got any tips on actively listening to help people that are watching today the one of the best agents i've ever spoken to in the world said they speak 10 percent of the time on listing appointments valuations uh, market appraisals whatever you want to call them they just ask great questions and then listen to listen to the response uh, and allow the client to self-discover if they're the agent or not i think most agents go in i mean i had this recently where we sold a place and we thought we'll get the local agents in and i'm obviously going to list it uh, through myself and um, be interesting to see what they've got to say um if they've got any off market buyers etc and none of them knew what we did until we were there there was no the pre-valuation cause which is where i believe you win the business um which we can maybe circle back to were oh so and so is running 10 minutes late or can we move our appointment forward so i'm gonna name and shame here um i don't feel bad doing it we had winkworth wandering around and kfh at the same time because one was early and one was late which was a bit car crash so obviously knew each other and it was just it just didn't work the other agents hadn't again back to the pre-val call hadn't didn't know what we'd done to the property and how much square foot we'd added so when when they're given us a price if you looked at the pound per square foot it just didn't stack up so they they lost it based on their inability to ask again great questions during the pre-valuation call which meant they would have come up with a better price per square foot when and you know if we were to have used them they were a really good agent but they had no clue on pricing again they didn't ask great questions so for me it's it's all about asking great questions and then showing your value rather than turning up and going well we're number one in the town we'll put you as a premium listing you know we we're really really good we sold next door last year la 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 no no one gives a damn Okay, well, I'm quite excited because I'm going to be involved. Well, actually, at the moment, I'm involved in helping my mum sell her property, which has been a really interesting experience with the agents and the solicitors. Um, and next week, I'm going to be in um, helping a, a very close friend of mine 
um, potentially list her property. So we've got three agents that are going to come round. But I've said actually we're going to call them tomorrow, um, and we're going to hear what they say, how they, what questions they ask before they come round, what they then do after, and actually I look forward to. Um, being with her on the consultation to actually hearing what they say and how they do it. Yeah. So from your point of view, you talked about processes and systems. And if you don't mind, let's talk about that market appraisal process. Um, so first of all, great questions when you're booking them in. I know you said you posted out there that you're coming on this um, lunchtime learnings and you're going to give at least three useful takeaway actionable tips so i'm going to hold you to that so let's talk about let's talk about some great questions um yeah. when you book the appraisal and let's talk and then what does a great call pre pre appraisal call look like cool okay um i'm gonna i'll start with the pre appraisal call and i think for me um ringing him up and saying hi it's chris um I just want to confirm the first thing is are, are all the decision makers going to be there if it's a no reschedule right and i know that you might have a your high street boss or your area director saying you've got to hit your kpis but reschedule in in my view and don't be afraid or make them there well no my partner's thinking of going to the gym well tell him to freaking not go to the gym because this is one of the biggest decisions you're ever going to make and i'm not going to waste my time or yours so um don't be afraid to reschedule because then you don't have to go through it all again or you're more likely to to win um oh god i could talk for hours here um ask them at the very end of the call based on um based on you know our meeting at three o'clock on tuesday uh, mr brown if you're absolutely happy with the service i offer is there any reason you cannot instruct me then and there and it'll either be uh um no i think you know if we're, if we're happy then we can instruct you you can use that later on um or yes actually we, we um we'd need to take some time to think about it no problem. Um, can I? So I'm better prepared for when I come. What is it you'd like to think about? Oh, well, we're not sure on this, this, and this. Okay, no worries. So if I can give you a solution to those three issues, would you then be in a position to sign a contract then and there? Yes, I would do. So we're, we're leading them um, towards signing. The ask them what the properties, what they think the property is worth. So um, yeah, man, that's your job. That's what I'm paying you to get round. You'll be a state agent. And do you know what? I fully appreciate that, Stephen. But obviously, you'll have been on Right Move and Zoopla looking at your neighbours' properties. Um, we're going to do loads of analytical research before we get there. I just wanted to see if you had uh, had a figure in mind. Yeah, I do, but I'm going to keep that to myself. Fine. I want you to tell me what your figure is. Uh, fine. Well, let's hope they marry up and uh, and you like our value and uh, you instruct me. Then uh, really interesting one on that one. If you ask them once, they're normally going to give you that. That's your job. If you ask them twice, in, in, we found in around 80% of the time, they will actually give you the figure. But you need to say, listen, you must have a ballpark, but we are doing X, Y, and Z. So you're not um, you're not pushing too much. If they say no twice, like you did, don't push them a third time or, you're, or you'll lose it. Um, yeah, I'm an awkward so-and-so, but I do it all listen, my I, I, I do it on my training to prove a point to everybody. No, listen, I like it, right? Um before you get there let's say Stephen, you're um let's call you mr singh right mr singh you're an accountant your partner is a midwife right um i've i've found out i've found you both on linkedin i've added you so you can see oh, okay wow this 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 guy is on it um and i'm gonna drop you a little whatsapp video grab my phone um, before I go out to the appointment, hi, Mr. Uh, Mr. Singh, really excited to see you at two o'clock on Tuesday. Before I get there, I'm going to be doing a lot of analytical research to make sure we come up with the right marketing strategy for you. Mr. Singh's an accountant, analytical research, tick. And uh, Mr. Singh, I've just had an 11 month year old, beautiful little gal. So I'm going to go to a war for you because midlife's are great. Looking forward to two o'clock on Tuesday. Already now, I've had um, the pre valuation call where they've said they can instruct me if they like me. I've um, I've sent a video which which is personalised, which most other agents won't have done. When I arrive, it's not are you Bob, are you Joe, are you Ahmed, are you Chris? It's 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 obvious who I am because I sent you the video, and I've built that emotional relationship before I even put my foot through the door. Combine that with a hand delivered letter the night before. I can't stop. I just wanted to ahead of tomorrow pass this in. I'm on the way to evaluation. 
And for me, by the time you're sat down, you're already three or four points ahead of the other agent. And then my final bit, because listen, I could talk for hours and hours on this, is the first line you use when you sit down. Um, so rather than have a look around straight away, it's Stephen, thanks so much for having me out. You might say, do you want to have a quick look around? I say, no, can we sit down for five minutes and I'll just run through how, how it's going to look. And then this is the script that someone taught me from the US and it served me so well. And that is, Stephen, thanks so much for having me out. Three things are going to happen today. One of three things are going to happen today, sorry. The first of all, first one is I'm going to tell you how I'm going to overexpose your property to get the best price the market will allow. And you're going to pick me, which is great. The second is I'm going to do exactly the same and you're going to go with another agent, which is which is fine as well. Or the third, if I don't think I'm the agent of choice for you, I'm best suited to get your property sold. I'll choose to walk away from the listing. How does that sound? Uh, 70 plus percent of the time they go straight to, well, why would you walk away from the listing? And that's where you're creating scarcity if I don't just work with anyone. Um, and you can go on and off, but let's say it's a really beautiful, immaculate house. You could say, hey, listen, when the day you list with me, Stephen, is the day your property becomes a show home so that I can get the best price the market will allow. You might not be prepared to do that. Well, obviously you are because your house is a show home. So you're like, wow, OK, this guy's a professional. He's great. And he might choose to, you know, the TV's going off. I'm sitting up. I'm offering you a cup of coffee if I haven't already. But this is the guy I want to work with already before I go. Yeah, show me round. Oh, I went to that school. And all that patter that, that goes um and that served me very very well on a listing i took on 3.85 million a couple of years ago where i stood up across the table shook the guy's hand and said thank you so much like i said at the start i don't think i'm uh, i'm gonna be agent of choice for this listing and he went what phoned me the next day and said i gave you it on a plate i said you didn't know because i'd have wasted your time and mine my job is to get your property sold not marketed if you want to go with me um, I'd be I'd be delighted to to take you on, but not at a price you dictate. You go and do whatever you want to do in your business, and I'll I'll focus what I'm great at in mine. And he was he was so taken aback. Um, and I was up against Savills and Knight Frank, little old Chris from Keller Williams at the time. Um, and that script served me so well. So it's all about how you present yourself um, in the first few minutes and before you even get there. Okay, so let's talk about scripts. And before we do that, um, Matt, thank you for watching. Um, I speaks about you. Industry Titan on screen right now. Sounding good, chaps. Love the prevail video idea. One we definitely recommend agents start doing. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for watching. Share it, like it, get it out there. Um, Which Matt is that, Stephen? Matt Lee. Ah, thank PBS. you, Matt. Appreciate you. From, from PBS. So um, professionals practice before they play. I can see you're a professional because obviously you've got that down to a uh, great, you know, so I'm messy a little bit, but, <laughs> but there we go. Okay. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that. So there's a lot of agents that watch that I do training and struggle with um, coming out with the lines, the scripts, the dialogues. Um, now, can you and you say to them come on we're doing the do well i say i don't talk about role play because i don't think people like role play if you ask anybody to put their hand up who likes role play everybody's hands stay down ask everybody if they like to practice because because they're professionals they all put their hands up i don't understand what the difference is so how can you get people to practice these so we at the estate agency at 9 30 every wednesday morning we call it objection handling again because if we call it scripts people go nah, i don't, don't want scripts or negative connotations or everything else um and i'd rather you practice on me stephen and i practice on you than we practice on the public because it costs a lot of money to practice on the public i'd you know if you stutter and splut and you 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 know, you're not very great at your confidence is low. Let's do that in an environment where everyone's willing you on and wants you to succeed rather than ignore it. Meaning when you're going out, you're bottling it on fees uh, or you're not able to negotiate because they're a big and scary lawyer or whatever else. Right. So for me, again, scripts, I can't echo this enough, allow you to actively listen and help the client self-discover what the right move is for them. There's not a manipulation. There's no, you know, getting them to say yes when they don't want to, et cetera. 
Um, but it's, it's about the speed in which you can move the client closer to the decision of whether they should use you or not, or when they are using you, whether they should accept an offer or not, based on the advice that you're giving. And I think the final bit is, if you want to be on this, if you want to be someone's estate agent for life, not just for that transaction, you need to form a relationship. And, and that's one of the things we say is, you know, why should we use you or whatever else? I say, listen, Stephen, I'm not here to get this property sold. I'm here to be your estate agent for life. And when I ask you for three referrals at the end of the process, it's not going to be awkward because you're going to think I'm great. Does that sound like an agent you want to work with? Well, well, Steve, uh, Bob is coming out from AJB Estates going, you know, we'll we'll put you on as a featured listing. Uh, we'll do this, that, and it just doesn't work. People buy what you do. Uh, people buy why you do, not what. I'm messing this up. Simon Sinek, people buy what you do, not what. People buy why you do it, not what you do. There we go. Um, and it's getting to people's why. You can tell I'm dyslexic, right? It took me a while to get there. Again, right. if I'd have practiced that, um, it would have been so much smoother. And that's the same with scripts. I could almost say I messed that up on purpose just so people can see me fluff it. Um, but scripts are so, so important. So how do we get people there? The reason I'm talking about this so much is that hopefully people go, OK, that's great. And what I'm prepared to do is um, if anyone wants a set of scripts, I'm not going to give everything we have away. Um, DM me on any of the platforms and what scripts you're after and I'll ping them over to you. Thank you. Can I volunteer? I have some scripts, please. I need yes. to learn some. Um, yeah. look, I love there what you said about the um, estate agent for life, the client for life. And um, most people go into witness protection after they've bought from estate agents in this country, which is absolutely ridiculous. You know, I estimate it's about 95% every time I do a training course and ask the question, have you heard from your estate agent that you bought the property through? It always comes back as no or very rare. And if they say yes, it's because they actually bought it through their own agency. So they're bound to hear from them. So um, there's a very good book out there, Millionaire Real Estate Agent by some fella yeah. called Gary Keller. Now in that book, he talks about 33 different touch points throughout the year yeah um why is that the states can do it but in the uk we don't seem to be able to do it so we do it at the estate agency i know so that a couple of the other self-employed models do because who's going to do it the neg in the high street model that doesn't have time the um the office managers probably not going to right because leads are almost coming in which they're just servicing due to the brand so there's no i guess need to and there's no want or desire to on the whole and if you look at maybe your smaller independence there's a lack of training around what you should be doing or what they do in the rest of the world that will result in uh in listing appointments and people knowing who you are so i'll give an example i'm off to sean newman's estate agent success summit tomorrow it's all on marketing i specialize my degree in marketing i think i'm all right here. but if i take two or three nuggets i could share with my agents i'm upskilling and we're all evolving now if i come back to the, the 33 touch gary then changed it to a 36 and some of the best agents in the world do 60 touches a year for me it needs to be a minimum of that 33 but they've got to be meaningful and again uh, if i look at your your hamptons your night franks they're not going to do it on behalf of their necks because they want to be the brand not the not the neg so what you tend to see is property of the week or we sold this for a great price per square foot where no one gives a damn the open rates are so low um so you've got to be personable so in a in a long roundabout way um agents that you should never archive your database you should always add value to them because you're fighting to be top of mind and little things like um i think it's what something like a third of the homeowners at the moment have been on for say have, have been in their property for six years i can't remember the exact stat but if you think i always do an exercise with our guys where i say get out 20 quid and they'll get it out so now get out a lighter and i'll say who hasn't send two touch points to their database and everyone will start buying the 20 and they think i'm gonna stop them and i don't now i know that's illegal 
but that's exactly what you're doing for future money. We're so busy focusing on short term. I need business now, 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 now. We're, we're literally burning our long term business. Now, you in, in that book and in, in uh, many others, you know, Tom Ferry does this. You can reverse engineer how many people in your database, how many touch points you need to have, how many listing appointments, how many appraisals. Literally, you can almost reverse engineer. It's not an exact science of if I send 35 bits of value content to my database of 3,000 strong. That alone from a lead generation activity should produce me X thousand pounds in a 12 month time frame. And um, we, uh, we, we used to call it at Keller Williams, uh, an eco model. Uh, now we just call it a business plan and we, we tweak it to make it more UK specific at the estate agency. But let's have that in situ as well. So yeah, we, we're going door knocking. Yeah, we're doing canvassing with, with Simon Gates, who's, who's a Ned with us that produces all our content. Um, yes, we are um and in fact we ghost write articles for our agents as well i think it's so important that, that because agents potentially won't do it but when they see the impact of it they'll then start doing it it's funny how our top agents are going why would i send you know bank of england base rate stuff out why would i do it oh i've got three valuation calls well yeah because you've got eight thousand people in your database and you're giving out value um so yeah it's it's so important and we're looking at whatsapp integrations and all sorts of stuff because we know the open rate on emails is only about 20%. Um, and you can be that pillar of your community. If you are in a self-employed model as well, um, do stuff in the community. And if you get a WhatsApp tool, just throw it out to people, invite people to a fireworks event, right? One of our guys um, over in Ealing, Anthony called Dowling, is doing something with a school where he's doing your toffee apples. Um, he gets a load of boards up around the school. But he gets to email and speak to everyone on his database in his world and invite them down, whether they come or not. What a nice touch point from an agent rather than we've just saw one in the street. Do you want to sell? It's it, you're becoming a pillar of your community. You're becoming the economist of choice for your community. Um, and that's the way you grow a bigger stay into your business as an independent agent, in my in my opinion. No, I agree. And I've got a lot of time for um, Jim Parker, Five Properties. And they have a Friday afternoon show where three of them talk about all the local events that are happening in that community that weekend to help their community, especially local businesses that most probably need need help today. I think it's fantastic. So whether you're self-employed, whether you're an estate agent, use your communities. Help I really them. Will, you, will you put that Joe Parker in the show notes? I've not seen that before. And I think that'd be great. Yeah, Jim Parker's exceptional, really, really good. Does a hell of a lot uh, for his community. Um, I think he's given away, and actually, he's been fantastic for um, My Computers for Schools campaign as well, um, with his generosity there. So thank you, Jim, if you're watching, and if you're not, and thank you anyway, appreciate it. Okay, so um, you, yourself, you said tomorrow that you're going to um, see Sean Newman and his uh, marketing event, the summit event. What else are you doing to self-improve and self-develop? And um, I love the fact that you're doing that. Why do you do it? Because um, we were talking offline about, you know, go to Australia and there's 4,000 people, agents there, 5,000 people, and they all pay to be there. Whereas um, it is a struggle to get... Um, people to go and invest in themselves why do you think more agents aren't investing in themselves because they're employed it's the bottom line and, and their employees don't want to pay uh, and there's not that many agents here that want to be entrepreneurs there's, there's, it's starting to evolve that way but i think in oz in north america you have more, more entrepreneurial minded people coming into real estate to use the term dare i say it whereas in the uk it's more of a secure nine to five employed role so it's a different mindset of people that uh, i think are involved in stages in the uk where you service the lead versus in oz well pretty much the rest of the world where you need to go and find that lead and then service it Okay, so what are you doing? What else are you doing to self-improve? What do you sure. listen to? So you like? I have a mentor uh, with uh, Agents Together. Um, I won't Thanks. say who, 
but one of the founders, which was which is really nice. I am uh, potential uh, taking on another mentor um, imminently, which so that will be two mentors helping me uh, doing what I'm doing. Potentially taking on a third. So you might be like, why would you have three, you madman? Um, because they all have different skill sets and will hold me accountable in in different areas. And what I've found previously is if you just have one person hang on to their every word, um, it doesn't always work well. I am looking to do some of Dan Preece stuff, uh, the key person of influence. I would love to be like a Tom Ferry of the UK. So uh, every if you if you're thinking about statency scripts, if you're thinking about processes, systems, you think Chris Buckler. And whether you come and join the estate agency or not, that's almost a byproduct. It's more, if I can be mentioned in the same breath as you, Watkin, Gatesy, as someone that's helped change the estate agency in the UK, uh, that's where I'd like to get to. And in order to get there, I've got a, um, if you haven't done it, download and do your key person of influence uh, scorecard um, from Dan Priestley. Just Google it and it will show you how well known you are in your industry. And things you can do to improve as well okay well on that note what a good place to end thank you so much for your time i'm really really grateful i wish you a um, massive success in your new venture if people want to find you chris uh go to just just at chris buckler on the socials uh or linkedin is probably probably the easiest um but like i say if anyone wants uh i'm gonna give all my scripts away but if there's someone struggling on a pre -val script or whatever else um dm me all i ask is that you do a little social media post uh copying steven and myself in talking about um the importance of learning in scripts that's that's all i ask for brilliant lovely thanks very much for your time thank you everybody for watching please like it share it get the message out there and have a fantastic afternoon thank awesome. you yes david